In this section we're going to be talking about angle relationships and similar triangles. So to get started let's go ahead and start with some basic types of angles. So we'll start with vertical angles. So when we're talking about vertical angles the best thing that we can do is probably to draw some pictures. So vertical angles would be two lines crossing. It doesn't matter which angle they cross at. But what happens are these angles are called vertical that are straight across from each other. So this angle up here, this angle down here are called vertical angles. And then this angle to the left is the vertical angle to this angle on the right. Now notice I denote these with one arc to show that these are equal to the top and bottom and two arcs show the left and the right are equal. So if I were to number these angles, let's say one, two, three, and four, what we would do is we would talk about these vertical angles having equal measurements. So the characteristic that you need to remember about vertical angles, we would say that they have the same measure. So vertical angles have the same measure. Now the way that we would write this in terms of our vertical angles that we have here is we would say the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. We could also say the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So the M stands for measure. This symbol means angle. So angle is equal to basically this angle shape with the arc through it. And then again, the M means measure. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 because they're vertical angles. They share the same vertex point right here across from each other, and the vertical angles from left to right also share the same ver vertex point and are across from each other. Well, there's a lot of different ways that we can set up some lines to start talking about different types of angles. One of the most common things you'll see is two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Transversal is kind of the start of a lot of statements. So first of all, we should define parallel lines real quick. I'm sure the Definition of parallel lines is familiar to you, but par parallel lines lie on the same plane and never intersect. And that means they never cross. They have the same slope and they never cross. Okay, so parallel lines, there's the definition. Now let's go ahead and look at two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now this transversal could be any line going through here at any angle. Now transversal is a line that intersects two parallel lines. So this is called our transversal line. And then these are our two parallel lines. We'll call them M and N. Now when I set this up, what ends up happening is I have eight angles that are formed. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have all sorts of stuff going on here. So first of all, one thing that you'll notice right away is we do have vertical angles. Uh, so for, for instance, 2 and 4 are vertical, 6 and 7. 1 and 4, 5 and 8 are all vertical. So what we're going to get to is a problem where I know like one piece of information about this, and based on that one piece, I should be able to fill out all the other angles that you see that are involved. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to pull in this picture a lot of different times and so we're going to keep repeating some definitions here based on this same picture. So again vertical lines, we'll get back to that one again real quick. Vertical lines, well, actually let's do vertical angles. Vertical angles have the same measure and that's just what we were talking up above in a more simple picture. So for this particular case that would look like the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4. They're vertical. The measure of angle 2 would equal the measure of angle 3. The measure of angle 5 would equal the measure of angle 8. And the measure of angle 6 would equal the measure of angle 7. So that's an example of where our shape is a little bit more complicated than this just X shape up here. We can also talk about alternate interior angles being equal. So let's go ahead and look at alternate interior angles. Now alt alternate interior angles also have the same measure. Now what we mean by alternate interior angles having the same measure 
Interior means the inside. So here's the interior. Now alternate would mean from one side to the other. So we're talking about the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 6. Because they're alternate to each other and they're in the interior. Now another pair we have here would be 4 and 5. So the measure of angle 4 would equal the measure of angle 5. So that's what we could talk about with alternate interior angles having the same measure. We could also talk about alternate exterior angles. And alternate exterior angles have the same measure as well. Well, if this is the interior, these up here would be the exterior, meaning the outside. So they're alternate exterior, so that would be 1 and 8. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 8. Because they're alternate on opposite sides of the transversal and they're on the outside of the parallel lines or the exterior of the parallel lines. The other set we have here is the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 7. So alternate interior angles have the same measure as well. Okay, another one that we can look at are corresponding angles. So let's look at corresponding angles. So corresponding angles have equal measure as well. Now corresponding are basically on the same side. So one would correspond to like the top left of the transversal cutting this M line and the top left of this transverse, transversal cutting the N line would be 5. So the measure of angle 1 would equal the measure of angle 5 by this correspondence. We would also have the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 6. So that would be these two. We'd also have the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 7, and the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 8. So this corresponding sides, meaning the same side of the transversal, really gives us a lot of information about what's going on with this shape. Now we have one other one that we haven't talked about, so let's go ahead and get to the next page to have a little bit more room here, and we'll talk about the next one. Now the next one would be same side interior angles. So this one looks a little bit different. So same side interior angles. Now I'm not going to say what happens here. Let's go look at this picture. So if we look at the interior, that's this piece right here. Again, this is the interior. Same side interior would be 3 and 5. Well, if I look at these, I don't think they're the same. So this angle 5 is definitely obtuse. It's more than 90 degrees. And this angle 3 is definitely acute, meaning it's less than 90 degrees. So these are not equal. But what ends up happening here is if I go through these steps, notice angle 3 and angle 6 are the same because they're alternate interior angles. And notice angle 6 and angle 5, when I put them together, create this straight line or 180 degrees. So if I look at our corresponding same side interior angles, they sum to 180 degrees, so they're supplementary. So for our picture, that would mean the measure of angle 3 is equal to, the, or sorry, not equal to, plus the measure of angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. We'd also have the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees. So all of these interesting facts will help us basically solve um, this setup that helps us work with the triangles. So I want to pull some problems from my math lab that will be ones that you can answer using this information so we can have a chance to work through some of those. So let me jump into my math lab and grab those 
and then I'll pop them up. So for this first problem, and again this is pulled right from my math lab, these are the types of problems that you'll see in your homework set. It says watch the video, you don't need to watch the video because you're watching this one. It says find the measure of each marked angle. Assume the lines are parallel. So these are my parallel lines, M and N. This is my transversal. So what I have here are the interior angles. And it looks like they're alternate angles, meaning they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate interior angles are equal, I believe. And that comes up right here. So alternate interior angles have the same measure, or they're equal. So what I can come down here then and do is I can set up an equation, 2x minus 25 equals x plus 4, because I know that alternate interior angles have the same measure or are equal. And once I have this set up, I can go ahead and solve pretty easily. I can subtract x from both sides. I can add 25 to both sides. And I end up with x equals, these cancel, these cancel, 29. So x equal 29. Now that's not my answer. What that is is a preliminary solution that helps me get to my answer. So the top angle is going to be 2x minus 25, which would be 2 times 29 minus 25. So here, when I go ahead and plug this in, I don't need this last parenthesis here, I have what, 60 minus 2 is 58 minus 25, so this would be 33 degrees for the top angle. Now for the bottom angle, this is x plus 4, so this is going to be 29 plus 4, which is 33 degrees as well. And they should be equal because alternate interior angles are equal. So they are equal, so that makes me feel good that this actually matched. So did I have to do both of these? No, I could have just found the top or the bottom because I already know they're equal, but it's a nice checkpoint. Okay, let's go ahead and look through another example. This one will be a little bit more extensive, a lot more interesting things to find about it. Okay, so for this one, it's kind of a big puzzle. We're going to be looking at quite a few different things here based on our vertical angles, uh, alternate interior, all those different things we learned up above to solve this picture. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with some basics. One thing that we haven't covered yet, but I think you probably all know, is the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So we can see that on this inside part right here, this triangle right here, that should sum to 180 degrees. A couple other things to keep in mind. If we look at the angles 3, 2, and 1, that should sum to 180. So should angles 2, 3, and 5 because they're straight lines. Also, if I start right here for angle 3 and I go clear around to angle 5, that should be 360. And all those same things will be true over here, 8 and 12 or 180, etc. So I should be able to go through and start solving this. Now when I start solving this, there's more than one place, of course, we can start, but I'm going to uh, pick the easy stuff here. 67 is a vertical angle to angle 12 right here. So 12 is 67 degrees. So I'm going to fill that in over here. I'm going to take the easy ones like I said. Okay, also some other things that we can come up with then is if this is 67, this is 180 degrees. So to find angle 8, what I would do is I take 180 degrees minus 67 degrees and I'd get 113 degrees. So this would be 113 degrees. So angle 8 is 113 degrees. Now the vertical angle to 11 is 8, so vertical angles are equal. So this is equal to 113 degrees as well. So number 11, angle 11 is also equal to 113 degrees. Okay, so that's kind of this corner that we've taken care of. Now I can't really do anything yet over here because I don't have any numbers to start with. But I do know I have two parallel lines, M and N, but I have two transversals here. So before I get started working on this bottom left, I want to jump up here to the top. So to get started here, 59 degrees is the vertical angle, it looks like, of one of these angles over here perhaps, but not really. So let me show you kind of what's going on here with that. So I can't just automatically choose that as a vertical angle. I have to be kind of careful which ones I choose here. 
So is 59 vertical to 2, 3, or 5? Well, if you notice, 2 and 4 are across from each other and share a vertex. 1 and 5 are across from each other and share a vertex. And 59 degrees and 3 are across from each other and share a vertex. So that's my vertical angle of 3. So double check, make sure you don't choose the wrong one. So the measure of angle 3 is 59 degrees. So let's go ahead and fill that in as well. Okay, next, let's see what we can come up with here. I can't go straight for the 180 here because I have two other angles involved and I'm not sure how they, they're going to split out. So I really can't do too much more here. I might need to start keeping in mind what I have going on for vertical angles and also considering just one transversal here. So if you look at this, and I look at my parallel line here, and my parallel line here, let's just look at one of these transversals. Let's just look at um, this one right here. So if I just look at that transversal, I have a transversal corresponding sides. So my corresponding side to angle three would be angle seven. So angle seven should also be 59 degrees. Okay. Now also, since I know this is 67 and 59 down here, I should be able to figure out, figure out angle 4 by taking 180 minus 59 minus 67, and I get 54 degrees here for angle 4. Okay, I'm madly typing away on my calculator here trying to keep up with our calculations we're doing. And now I see from here to here is a 180. So if that's a straight line, I should be able to find angle 5 by taking 180 minus 59 minus 54. And I get 67 degrees here. So angle 5 should be 67 degrees. Well, angle 5 is vertical angle with 1, so that should also be 67 degrees. Um, oops, I haven't done 2 yet. 2 is vertical to 4, so that should be 54 degrees. Okay, so I have quite a bit done here so far. Now, 59 degrees down here is the vertical angle to 9, so 9 should be 59 degrees as well. 59 degrees. And then I have 180 degrees here again. So to find that one, I take 180 minus 59, and I'd get 121 degrees here for angle 10. 6 is vertical to 10, so that would be 121 degrees over here. So it's just like a big puzzle, and once you find one spot to get started, they all kind of all start falling into place. So these are kind of fun to work on. But the thing we need to remember here is I can consider just one transversal here if I want to. I don't have to consider everything at the same time. So those are some problems that are similar to what you'll see in your um, homework problems in my math lab. This would be a good one for a test, too. Uh, to be given a figure like that and figure out all the other angles. And of course you can use a calculator to do that. Now we just alluded to an interesting piece of information and that's the angle sums of a triangle. So the angle sum of any triangle is 180 degrees. So if I took two, tri two triangles, no matter what shape, not even similar shapes, and I measured these angles, and I added them up, I would get 180 degrees for the sum of the angles. Same with this one. It's true for any triangle that you can draw. Now, there's different types of triangles. Just like the triangles I just drew, I can categorize some triangles based on their angles and based on their sides. So let's go ahead and first of all and look at an acute triangle. And a lot of times I'll just use the shape of a triangle to represent the word triangle. Now we haven't really said the word acute yet and defined it, but we have mentioned it. An acute angle is an angle that's less than 90 degrees. So an acute triangle has all angles less than 90 degrees. So this is the less than sign. So all angles less than 90 degrees. Not equal to 90, but less than 90. So again, an acute angle is less than 90. Okay, so an acute angle has all angles that are less than 90. We also have a right triangle. So 
So a right triangle has one 90 degree angle. It can't have two because I can only have 180 degrees in a triangle. And if I had two angles that were more than 90, that would already be over 180 and I don't have room for a third angle. So it has one 90 degree angle. Now a lot of times you'll see this drawn and you'll see a little square in the corner. This is the 90 degree angle. Okay. Now a lot of times you might see like a sketch, somebody might sketch up a triangle and it's like, I don't think that looks like a 90, but they'll stick a 90 in there anyway. So even if it doesn't look like a 90, but you see the little box, it means it's a 90 degree angle. So we've talked about acute triangles, right triangles. Let's talk about obtuse triangles. Now an obtuse triangle, and again, we've mentioned obtuse before, but we've never defined it, has one obtuse angle. It can't have two obtuse angles because then it would sum more than 180 for two angles. So it has one obtuse angle. Now remember, obtuse, if acute is less than 90, an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. So usually these are pretty easy to spot. You might see something like this, definitely more than the 90 there. So this would be your obtuse angle. So those are a few definitions based on sides. We can also talk about some definitions of triangles based on angles. So let's talk about, I'm sorry, those are angles. We can talk about them based on sides as well. So let's talk about an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle has three equal sides. Now, when I talk about three equal sides, I can show that with some tick marks. So if I have these tick marks, those tick marks mean that all three sides are equal, okay? Now, this is an interesting note for equilateral triangles. If I have three equal sides, I also have to have three equal angles. So three equal sides implies this arrow with the um, double lines mean implies three equal angles. So equilateral that we just talked about right here implies equiangular. So three equal angles equals three equal sides. Now I can denote the three equal sides with just this little arc. It's a single arc in each of the angles meaning they're equal. So that's equilateral triangles. I can also talk about isosceles triangles. An isosceles triangle has two equal sides. And because I have two equal sides, that's going to imply two equal angles. Okay, now the way that we can show this, again, Let's say I have a very tall isosceles here. So here's my two equal sides. Now the angles that are opposite those are the equal angles. So I also have two equal angles. So these are called the base angles and the base angles are equal. So we've talked about three equal sides. We've talked about two equal sides. We really can't talk about one equal side because that doesn't make sense. So really what this goes to next is a scalene triangle. And the scalene triangle has no equal sides. And of course what we've learned already, this implies no equal angles either. So the way that we might see a scalene to show no equal sides, we'd have a tick mark a double tick mark and a triple tick mark, meaning no sides are matching. Now because no sides are matching, no angles are matching either, so I could show this with a single arc. The single arc is across from the single tick mark. The double arc of this angle is across from the double tick mark. And the triple is across from the triple tick mark. Now once I know these things about triangles, I can start looking at some other definitions as well. The first definition we'll look at is similar triangles. So for similar triangles,
They basically have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. They could have the same size, but if they have both, then it's called something different. So same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Another couple things that we could look at with a similar triangle before I draw the pictures. Corresponding angles have the same measure. And because corresponding angles have the same measure, then the corresponding sides are proportional. They're not necessarily equal, but they're proportional. So corresponding sides also have some sort of a relationship there. So corresponding sides are proportional. And what this is going to end up meaning is we can start talking about ratios here. The ratios of corresponding sides are equal. And we'll do some problems in a little bit that will really show exactly what these mean. But the way we're going to notate this, let's say we have two triangles. Make them kind of tall. And you can see that they're the same shape. And then what we're going to do to show that the angles are equal, I would say the angle, the bottom left, is equal to the bottom left. The bottom right is equal to the bottom right, and because those two are equal, the top angle has to be equal as well. So what we can do then is we can talk about, we'll call this angle A, this would be A prime, this would be B, B prime, and C, and C prime. So angle A corresponds to A prime, angle B corresponds to B prime, and angle C corresponds to C prime. Those would be some examples um, that we could look at so with something like that. Now we talked about how corresponding angles have um, the same shape but not necessarily the same size. Well if they have the same size and the same shape they have a special name and those are called congruent triangles. So for congruent triangles, it's more specific, they have the same size and the same shape. So basically if I picked up one triangle and put it on top of the other, they would be identical. So one way that we could see this, you know, with the naked eye sometimes you look at two triangles and you think, ah, oh, they're not the same. But the one way that we can note this is we can say, well, both of these have a right angle, both of these sides have the same length, both of these hypotenuse have the same length, and both of these, this base leg has the same length. So that's one way I can show that. Now if these are all three sides in this ratio, this corresponding ratio, that means the angles are the same too. So angle, angle, 90 degrees is already done up here as well. So this is one way that we can verify that. So what we're going to do for the rest of the lecture is we're going to work quite a few different problems from my math lab that you'll see that we'll use this information that we've just covered. So let me go through and pop those out of my math. Okay, so for this one it says name the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles of the following pair of similar triangles. So similar triangles mean the same angles, not necessarily the same um, sides. So they're the same shape and the same angles, but not necessarily the same size. And you can see clearly these aren't. So what I like to do with these is I like to write them or draw them out so they're in the same order, so to speak. So I'm going to rewrite these and then I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to flip it so the right angle is on the left as well. So that would be angle V then. I have to make sure I have everything correct. U is still the bottom, T is still the top, this is still my single, and U is still my double. So to get started here when I'm looking at these I could say something like um, Let's start with side EF is 
corresponding to TU. I guess I don't need the line segment up above there. Okay, so I could do all sorts of these. So I could do side EG corresponds to TV. Now notice if I'm going from E to F, I also go top to bottom, top to bottom. Our other side that we have here is GF. And since I started on the left, I want to go to the right, so that would be corresponding to VU. I can all these, also do these with angles, so angle G, which is my right angle, corresponds to angle V. Angle E, which is at the top, corresponds to angle T. Angle F, which is on the bottom, corresponds to angle U. Now again, I rewrite these in this order so it's easy to pick those off. Um, let's go ahead and look at another example, um, number 17, I'll go grab that one. So in this one, they want us to name the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. So we have to be kind of careful how we set this up. They tell us that EA right here and CD are parallel. So that tells us that we have two parallel lines and we can just think about this as cut by one transversal for now. And if they were cut by this transversal, and we extend this out a little bit so we can kind of see this a little bit better, we can look at this as alternate interior angles uh, so if we look at this as alternate interior angles, we can see again on the alternate sides that D is equal to this E. And we can also kind of put it together a triangle from there. And then we can see that these are vertical angles right here. And because I have E and D equal and I have these angles B on the inside equal, that would tell me that C and A are equal. Now we can't just write it like that though, we need to kind of define what's going on here because when I say B, it's not real clear what that means. So let's go ahead and be specific here. We'll say angle AEB. So here angle AEB corresponds to, so here we have AEB, so E is our kind of our middle point here that defines this. Well, A corresponds to C, so when I talk about what this corresponds to, I need to start with angle C, okay, so A, E, B, so I go C, B, D. So again, I'm sorry, A, E, B, so C, D, B. Too many D's and B's here. So that would be one. So A, E, B, I could also go, um, again, E is the vertex there, so I don't want to use that one again. I could use um, A, B, E, and that's going to correspond to angle C, B, D. Because again, A corresponds to C, B corresponds to B, and E corresponds to D. So let's do our last one here for angles, E, A, B corresponds to angle, so E corresponds to D, A is to C, and of course B is that vertical angle in the middle. Now I can also do sides, so we could do side, let's do um, AE, so AE, and we want to move in the same direction, so AE corresponds to CD. We wouldn't want to say here AE corresponds to CD, we want to go in the same, or sorry, DC, because A moves to E, and then you think, okay, well, D moves to C. We want to make sure that the A is matched to the C, because those are the angles that match. So we have AE, we could also have C, let's do CB. So CB, right here, this distance, we start at C, so I should start at A, corresponds to AB. Uh, last one would be side db, and that corresponds, again, d corresponds to e, so that would be eb. And again, we want to have that in the correct order. We don't want to say this corresponds to be, because we want to get the, si uh, this, the direction the same, too, and the correct angle starts. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another example that you'll run across in your homework as well. In this one, 
we're going to be looking at um, finding unknown side lengths um, when we're given a similar triangle. So I'll go grab that one. Okay, so when we're setting this one up, what we want to do is we want to set this up in terms of ratios. So I always kind of have a key off to the side. Um, I'm going to do the large triangle to the small triangle for comparison in my ratio. So for the large ratio, I want to find two sides that match. So that would be the 16 and the 8. And we can see by looking at this that when I move from the large to the small, I go down by a half. But let's go ahead and just work this out as is so we'll see that. If I want to find A then, I would go to the corresponding side of 16 to the corresponding side of A. And then I cross multiply here so I'd get 16A equals 16 times 8. So 16A would equal 16 times 8, 128. And divide both sides through by 16 and I could have done this and canceled the 16's right away. So I get 128 divided by 16 and I'm left with 8. So it's just what we expected. So A equals 8. Now for B, again, I know I'm going by half, so I know B is going to equal 10. But the way we'd set that up is I'd choose corresponding sides that I already know the ratio of. And then I'd fill in the 20 over B. Cross multiply. So I'd have 16B equals 20 times 8, which is 160. Divide both sides through by 16 here, and I get B equals 10. So, and this one's easy enough just to glance at and see I cut everything in half, so that's a pretty quick one. Let's go ahead and look at another example. So for this one, we're given that these are two similar triangles, okay, one on top of the other. So for these similar triangles, I'm going to break them up and split them out, just so it's easier to see what's going on here. I have this smaller one on top, and with the smaller one on top, it's O, Q, and P. This is 180 from O to P, and this is 90 from P to Q. And then I have this taller one that it also involves that top one. Now this one has R and S as your bases, X is the base, and then Q is this entire side, well I guess Q kind of comes out right here, so this entire side would be O and S. Now this this length across the side for this one would be 180 plus 540. So that would be 720. So now as I set up my ratio, I'm going to be able to solve for X by saying 180, so I'm going to go instead of large to small here, I'll go small to large, and it doesn't matter just as long as you're consistent. So for instance, Let's look at one last problem. Okay, so on this last one, we're talking about a tree that casts a shadow and a shadow that's cast by vertical posts. So what we want to do is we want to draw what the picture shows, and it kind of makes it easier to solve. So first, so I'm going to have a tree. So let's get this tree drawn out. And the tree is casting this shadow. And so this is the shadow on the ground. So this is the shadow right here. This is the tree, and this is the distance from the top of the tree to the end of the shadow. Now, the shadow is 22 feet long, so I can fill that in. Now, it says at the same time a shadow is cast by a vertical four-foot post. Now, it appears um, the shadow here is only two feet long, so I'm guessing the post is shorter. So I'm going to draw this post, but because the sun is shining at the same angle, all of these angles should be corresponding as well. So this should be a 90, this should be a 90, this angle is similar, this angle is similar as well. Because again, it's at the same time, so that means the angles of the sun is hitting it as well. Well, it's a vertical four foot post and the shadow is two feet long. So what I can do is I can set up my ratio and solve. So I'm doing tree to post. And remember, you have to have the same in the same direction. So I'm doing 22 to 2 is equal to the height of the tree to the height of the post. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to get 2 times tree, I'll just put a T there, is equal to 22 times 4. Divide both sides through by 2, and I get the tree is equal to 44 feet tall. Okay, so again, 
when you do this, you need to set up these problems and show your work. Uh, the more work you show, the more credit that you get. Just to write answer is not going to be enough for credit. So it's important to be able to explain your reasoning no matter what pre profession you go into. Being able to communicate clearly what you mean is very important. As usual, if you have questions while you're working, feel free to text, take a screenshot, send it to me and I'm happy to help out. Another thing, these videos are long, uh, but they're long because I show a lot of detail. If you don't need this much detail, you're welcome to fast forward through as well. So again, let me know if you have any questions, I'm happy to help.